Please join us in a journey that Savina Tubal will present about Sarah's tent, which she co-founded with Rabbi Judith Halevi in 1994. Savina? Thank you, Shira. I'd like to take you on this journey into the tent of Sarah. And the tent of Sarah that I'm going to start with is actually my own home, because that's where most of the events of Sarah's tent started. So I'm going to take you first through my front door, which has been a great part of Sarah's tent. Above it, you'll see a goddess, which was given to me by uh, Jerry and uh, Linda Owen, uh, which is of a goddess, and that really symbolizes a little bit about what Sarah's tent is about, to me. Actually, before, um, before my, my home became the heart of Sarah's tent, we, uh, um, the, the group germinated in uh, some classes that um, Judith Halevi gave, beginning with the Rabbi Nachman stories. Um, the Lost Princess, and then we did The Beggars. People started joining, and actually it wasn't Sarah's tent then, it was just a class. And then little by little, we uh, came together as a group, and we just didn't want to separate. We had bonded so well, and it became such a wonderful community, that uh, we just stayed together and continued classes, and little by little, we started doing other things together, and that's when we started doing them at my home. You know, Sabina, that reminds me of uh, the very first class you held, uh, which happened to be outside uh, in the back patio behind your kitchen. Maybe you remember that? Yes, I do. That was on the deck. Uh, um, I think it, uh, I think that the uh, the class was about the matriarchs, and I I had just uh, uh, well I hadn't just published my book Sarah the Priestess, but I did talk about uh, Sarah and about the matriarchs as I saw them, and told the story as I saw it, and uh, I think it was very successful at that time. It was a wonderful class, and then we, I remember we moved to where Matifta was holding uh, their classes, and you taught some more classes on Wilshire near Crescent Heights. You remember some of those classes? Well, I, it was actually Ju both Judith, and, uh, Rabbi Judith and I who taught classes. We called it the Midrash class. Uh, but by then, I think we had already uh, created Sarah's Tent. By then, we had already decided that we were Sarah's Tent. Uh, do you remember some of those very first uh, holidays we spent in your living room uh, as a group of Sarah's Tent people? Um, I think the first time I remember being here was for a Passover Seder around your coffee table in the living room. Can you tell us something about that? Well, it was the first, <laughs> first Seder I had ever, ever been to that was quite as interesting <laughs> as the one we had that day. Uh, I remember you, Shira, actually tearing up little pieces of, of paper, <laughs> of paper plagues and throwing them around my living room. I wasn't sure how happy I was about that. But <laughs> and I remember, uh, uh, I remember actually Judith playing the snake. With a with, a, with some with a, a stocking on her head, <laughs> and we did some crazy things that day. Uh, but it was a wonderful seder, and I think what it did for us was to show us that there were other ways of understanding Torah, that w there were other ways of appreciating what Torah meant in our present lives, not just a story as the Bible or the tradition tells us that we should do, that we were freed from Egypt, but what it meant to be free, really free in our religion. I'd like to say that the essence of that 
kind of freedom came from Rabbi Judith Halevi's teaching of the Rabbi Nachman stories because she did it in such a way she brought out in each one of us our own creativity but to unbelievable degrees I mean it was just really fantastic the things that we created out of the stories that she told the journey became both a long long journey about 10 years now and it's also a short journey but I think I'm going to have to give you the short version because uh, the long version is just too wonderful <laughs> to be able to reproduce um, so we'll go into my living room which uh, was the center of Sarah's tent and uh, we'll look around the uh, the room where we did many firsts one of the first was that we managed to get an incredible our own Torah and our own Torah was really really our own Torah because it lacked the last book the book of Deuteronomy and I thought that was great because uh, a lot of Deuteronomy is quite misogynist we were happy to be without it but at least I was um, but the, uh, the important part about that was that so many people learned to read Torah from the scroll and that was really uh, an incredible experience for a lot of people a lot of people learned to bond with each other to play games that seemed silly but really had very deep meaning we did Shabbat dinners together here we had Purim parties we had a sukkah outside uh, everybody joined in to create the sukkah with the uh, all these beautiful things that people brought uh, we dressed up we uh, our Purim parties were, were really fun we had one at Shearer's which was uh, uh, probably one of the best we've had with everybody as you can see uh, in their most fantastic creations uh, that was the Havdalah ha Halloween you're right Sarah's tent is a community of people with a bonded sacred experience and it's sacred because everything we did really had a holy mission to it the Shekhinah, the wings of the Shekhinah were always above us whether we created a Seder, whether we created a Purim whether we just did a birthday it was always very special and very holy and that came from right from the beginning like the first birthday we ever did was for Rabbi Judith I don't remember how old she was but anyway uh, it was done in my um, in my garden and we created a, a throne for Judith at the bottom of the garden and we all lit candles and went down and gave her a blessing that was the kind of event that uh, gave the essence of the community the feeling of what it was like to be part of Sarah's tent and that's why very special people were drawn to Sarah's tent and those very special people were, seemed to be always very creative people uh, I can you know, tell you about the Seders about the, the uh, wonderful pieces that were created for a Seder like uh, a, a, an altar that was built by uh, Alien Shana which had a mirror in it with uh, Jerusalem written on the top when you went to Jerusalem you saw who Jerusalem really was I mean it was just incredible uh, we had um, uh, Tashlik on the beach 
at different people's, uh, we were either on the beach or we had it once at uh, Ruth Rubenstein's. Uh, she lives right on the beach and the water come, came right up to uh, where we threw our sins away. And uh, we also had, uh, every summer we had an, a Shabbat on the beach uh, or a Havdalah on the beach uh, where Ailey would put up a tent and we'd have our little tent and uh, do our Havdalah there. There was nothing that we could think of that we didn't celebrate. And everything that happened, we celebrated. Whether it was somebody's wedding, whether we blessed somebody's daughter getting married, whether we somebody had a baby. And we also mourned with people who were sick and people who died. Unfortunately, some of our members have died. Um, and uh, I think that's probably what community means and what I always envisioned as a community, that there should be people who really love each other, who really will go out of their way to take care of somebody, who will, if they cannot go out of their way to do it, will pray for you. It's the meaningful part of Sarah's tent. It's what is the throbbing heart of Sarah's tent. Shall be a blessing. You shall be.